Hi, this is Nick Vizai, and this is the sixth in a series of videos for applied math for water treatment plant operators. I'll share the screen with you, and we'll get started with this presentation, uh, which, as you know, if you've been following this series, is based on math uh, examples from the Lake County, Ohio uh, Aquarius Water Treatment Plant, and we say thank you to them for sharing their data and their design information with us. But let's get started with this uh, module. Practical Math, Water Treatment Plant Operator, six in a series. Uh, if you've been following along, you know that I've been working my way through the water treatment plant, uh, and each one of these videos starts off with a conversion chart, factors that you can use to solve some of the math problems. I'm not gonna spend time going over that again. Uh, we do have some additional information in this table, so let me go over that with you. Uh, in the uh, third column, I've got the Aquarius water treatment plant averaging free and combined chlorine residual of 1.6 and 0 0.3 milligrams per liter. We've got the hypochlorite use was 4,280 gallons for the month. And again, this was March. It was uh, used at 14.3%. Raw water flow rate, you see there, finished water flow, uh, finished water storage. A little, little ditty there about chlorine and hypo, one pound of chlorine and one gallon of 12% hypo, a half a pound of chlorine and one gallon of 6% hypo. So remember that. Uh, total filtered water for the month was 227.055 million gallons. A little bit about the filters, <clears throat> two backwash pumps, and a backwash recovery basin. This table then is the Aquarius high service pumps. We're going to do a little bit about our pumping issues uh, in the plant today. So you see we've got pump number one, number two, number three. Pump number four is vacant. There's this pad there for a future pump if they need it. Uh, and then pump number five and number six. And there's some data for the pumps. The max flow rating for the pumps is 4.54 for the three small ones, or for the two small ones, and the three big ones are 8.64. Now you notice that some of them are fixed speed, some of them are variable frequency drive. The total dynamic design head for them was 260 feet, and the horsepower was 250 and 500 respectively. So you want to be able to refer back to those when necessary. So with that information, let's go ahead and try some of these questions, see how you do on the math today. Question number one. If the overall efficiency of the wash water pumping system is 87%, what horsepower is being developed when a cell of a filter is being backwashed at 1.356 centimeters per second with a design head for the pump that you get out of the table? If you want to work this problem, you might want to pause the video now and get your pencil and paper out and in a calculator and give it a shot. Okay, let's move on and see how I did this. The first thing I need to do is change that centimeter per second backwash velocity to a gallon per minute flow rate. And that's pretty simple to do. If you, if you need help, you can go to the tables that give you the information on how to make these calculations. But I take the 1.356 centimeters per second. And obviously, I want, I want to get to gallons per minute eventually. So I'm going to change the seconds to minutes by multiplying by 60. And I want to change those centimeters to inches. So I've got to divide by 2.54. And then, of course, I want not inches, I want feet, so I'm going to divide by 12. I'm going to come up with a velocity of 2.67 feet per minute. Well, if I look into the tables, I see that my filter half cell is 12 and a half by 37 and a half feet, which is about 469 square feet. So 469 square feet times the 2.67 feet per minute is 1,252.2 cubic feet per minute. So in other words, you can envision the filter with these square plates on them. Um, there's 469 of them. Each of them are, are one foot by one foot. So there's one square foot. You have 469 of these laying on a flat table. And you're moving them up at a rate of 2.67 feet per minute. When it goes up one foot, you've got 469 cubic feet. Up a little bit further, you got twice that. You eventually end up with 1,252.2 cubic feet in one minute. So then I can change that to gallons per minute by multiplying by 7.48. And I come up with a rate of 9,367 gallons per minute. So now I can work the horsepower problem. I'll go to the table if necessary and get the formula out. And it says multiply the gallons per minute, which was 9,367, times the head, which I found from the table is 56 feet, divided by the 3,960 and the efficiency, which was 87% according to the problem. And I come up with an answer of 152.3 horsepower. 
Hope you did well on that. Let's move on to question number two. Assuming that the finished water storage of the plant was full, you'll have to find that in the table. Calculate the CT value in milligrams per minute per liter, milligram minutes per liter at the average flow rate and the average free chlorine residual. Now let me say right away, we gotta remember this is not how CT is truly calculated, but we don't have information from the plant about high hourly flows, low flows, low residual, low clear well levels, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna do the best I can with what I have. You can see how I laid this out here. I went into the table and I saw that the raw water pumpage for the month was 232.201 million gallons. And the finished water storage was 2.4 million gallons and has a baffling factor of 0 0.5. And the free chlorine residual, and that's what I use for CT, not total, but free, was 1.6 milligrams per liter. So the CT value at these conditions, the conditions that it were supplied to me, would be the milligrams per liter chlorine times the baffling factor times the volume of storage divided by the flow rate. And for those of you not, in, not um, too familiar with CT values, basically what they're doing, the regulators are doing is having you uh, calculate a detention time, which is always the volume divided by the flow. And then you multiply that by the chlorine residual. But for the volume, they're not giving you credit for the entire theoretical volume of the chamber, the, the uh, disinfection chamber. They're gonna say, you've got a baffling factor for it and you're gonna get that much credit. It's a percentage. It's always gonna be less than one, the baffling factor. You're gonna multiply that times the volume. So with a full clear well system and all of the, the clear well uh, storage, which turns out to be 2.4 million gallons, I only get credit for half of that. Then I'm gonna multiply that by the 1.6 milligrams per liter free chlorine and divide it by 7.5 million gallons per day and multiply by 1,440 minutes in a day. And I get an answer of 368.64 milligram minutes per liter, which, is, which of course is way more than they need. Uh, it's interesting, on Lake Erie, uh, in the summer, you need about nine or 10 milligram per liter minutes at the pHs that they normally come in with. And in the winter, when the water gets very cold, you may need uh, somewhere around 35 to 40 milligram minutes per liter. So obviously they're in real good shape here at this plant. All right, let's move on to question number three. Now three is a uh, long drawn out uh, history lesson about the plant that I wanna record for the plant operators here. It's not necessary to know all of this to do the problem, but I'm, I'm again trying to memorialize some information for the operators at the plant. The original design of the Aquarius water treatment plant allowed for pre-chlorination point to the rapid mix, that was one point, allowed uh, pre-chlorination to the settled water just prior to the filters in an area that they call the flume. The flume is what takes settled water over to the filters <clears throat> and to a post-chlorination point into the finished water storage. So they had three places that they could chlorinate. Two of them were pre-filter and the other one was after filtration. Now normal operation was to use the flume and the post points only. They wouldn't uh, put uh, chlorination into the rapid mix because they didn't want to make um, disinfectant byproducts any more than they had to. Uh, so unless it was an emergency, that's what they would do. Now in the past, and I can attest to this because I was superintendent of the plant back in the 1980s and I went through this, uh, the Aquarius water treatment plant operators would sometimes have difficulty meeting the target chlorine residual, which was generally about 0.2 or 0.3 milligrams per liter, coming from the filter effluent when they were feeding large amounts of powdered activated carbon. So in other words, the goal then was to put uh, chlorine into the flume sufficiently enough to go through the filter and come out the other end of the filter at about 0.2 or 0.3 milligrams per liter free residual. Because you knew that if you did that, you satisfied the chlorine demand. You understand breakpoint chlorination, when you start to gain free chlorine residual, it means you've gone past the breakpoint, and that's what we wanted. So we would add enough uh, activated, or rather, enough chlorine hypochlorite on top of the filters, such that when it came through the filter, it would be 0 0.3. The problem was, when you're feeding heavy amounts of powdered activated carbon, it would begin to absorb uh, on the uh, free, uh, land on the on the, uh, the filters and absorb the free chlorine as it was going through. And we would notice that filters that were in operation a lot longer would rob more chlorine than ones that were only in service for a few hours. So for example, you take uh, two filters all putting out the same amount of water each. The one filter that was in service for like 50 hours 
would be robbing the chlorine residual, whereas the filter that was only online for 10 hours and hadn't taken in that much of activated carbon was putting it through a lot more chlorine. We get to the point where no chlorine would come through a filter once it was in 70, 80 hours. Now, a filter redesign has solved that problem. Recently, well, at least about eight years ago, they went through a filter redesign that provided individual filter effluent application points for the hypochlorite. So in other words, they can feed hypochlorite to each individual filter effluent based on the flow coming through the filter and the need for chlorine. They can just inject it right there and that's normal operations. So they don't put chlorine into uh, a common point for disinfection in the clear well now. Now they do it coming out of each, each individual filter, which is a bet much better uh, design for them. So here's the question. The operator needs to make an adjustment to the hypochloric feed rate for a filter that has been in service for enough hours, such that the free chlorine residual in the effluent has been declining and will soon reach zero milligrams per liter. Now there's three filters in service. All of them are equally splitting the average raw water flow rate. So they're all putting out the same amount of water. But one of them has been in, series, been in service a lot longer than the other, so it's robbed of chlorine. Now the hypochloric feed rate to the filter is 23 milliliters per minute. What increase is needed? And here's how I went about this problem. First of all, the 23 millimeters per minute, milliliters per minute is irrelevant, doesn't matter. The point is, two of the filters are putting out good chlorine, the 0.2 or the 0.3 goal that you're meeting. The other one is starting to decline and it's not gonna put out any chlorine. You gotta add chlorine to that so it matches the other two filters. So you wanna put in 0.3 milligrams per liter or in increase your feed 0.3 milligrams per liter. So, for problem number one, we calculated the raw flow was seven and a half million gallons per day. I take that seven and a half million gallons per day, I'm gonna split it evenly between three filters because that's what you're telling us to do. So that means that each filter is flowing at a rate of 2.5 mgd. Now the sodium hypochlorite solution was, we were told was 14.3% from the table. And from that linear uh, information I gave you, um, a 12% solution would have one pound of chlorine per gallon. So all I do is take the, the, um, the percentage that they gave me, the 14.3% divided by 12, and that will give me a pounds per gallon, pounds of chlorine per gallon of hypo. It turns out to be 1.2. And you can look at the AWWA standard B300 for that kind of information. But essentially, you just take the, uh, the sodium hypochlorite percentage divided by 12% and you'll come up with your answer. So we know that we have hypochlorite solution every gallon of which has 1.2 pounds of chlorine in it. So if I want to dose at 0.3 milligrams per liter, I multiply that times 8.34 and the two and a half MGD flow, and it tells me I'm gonna need 6.25 pounds per day chlorine. And if I divide that by the 1.2 pounds of chlorine per gallon of hypo, it tells me I need 5.2 gallons of hypo per day for that filter for the 0.3 increase. I take the four, now it's just a matter of taking the 5.2 gallons and converting it to milliliters per minute. I take the 5.2 divided by 1440, multiply by 3785 milliliters per gallon, and I come up with an answer of an increase of 13.7 milliliters per minute increase. Hope you got that one right. Long drawn out history lesson, but pretty simple to do once you figure out what, what we're asking. Let's try lesson number four, question number four. When I look through the data, I see that on March 16th at about 5 p.m., the Aquarius water plant was pumping out to the distribution system at a rate of 13.9 MGD. Remember, the, the average was about seven, seven and a half MGD, but they, on this particular hour, they were at a rate of 13.9 MGD. They were using a small pump and a large pump. Uh, and if the overall system operating at 594 horsepower, and the pressure going out, out the door was 95 PSI, What's the overall efficiency percentage of the system? So in other words, you've got to take the horsepower formula, recalculate it for efficiency percentage by plugging in some of these numbers. And I'll show you how I did that. Again, if you want to try this, go ahead and stop the video now. Give it a shot. Okay. I took the 95 PSI and converted it to feet of head because remember the, the, the horsepower formula requires feet of head, not horsepower. So I take the 95, multiply by 2.31, and I come up with a system head of 219.45 feet. The 13.9 MGD multiplied by 694 will give me approximately 
a flow rate of 9,647 gallon per minute. So I'm moving 9,647 gallon per minute out the door at a, at a head of 219.45 feet. The horsepower we know is the gallons per minute times the head divided by 3960 times the efficiency. So if I want to solve for efficiency, I take the efficiency, move it up to the left, take the horsepower and take it and bring it down. And now my formula becomes gallon per minute times the head over 3960 times the horsepower. When I plug those numbers in, I get roughly a 90% efficiency. Not bad. Hope you did well on that. All right, let's try question number five. Now, referring to question number four, to get the time and the conditions that you were operating at. What was the cost to deliver 10,000 pounds of water if the electric utility is charging 12 cents per kilowatt hour? Now, you can ignore all other electric. I know when you get an electric bill, you see all the kind of costs, especially here in Ohio. First Energy just <laughs> has a, a very intricate billing system. They get to charge you for demand, for delivery costs, electric, all that stuff. But we're just talking about the kilowatt hour charge of 12 cents right now. I picked that number out of the air. It could be anything for you guys. Here's what I did. According to question number four, we were developing 594 horsepower. And we were pumping 9,647 gallons per minute. So 9,647 gallons per minute, with each gallon being 8.34 pounds, if I multiply by that, it tells me that I'm pumping 80,456 pounds every minute. If I multiply that by 60, I come up with a pounds per hour delivery of 4,827,360 pounds of water. Interesting. Well, the 594 horsepower times the 0.746 kilowatts per horsepower, because if you remember from our previous videos, and you can look in the table too, you see that a kilowatt hour, a kilowatt is 746 watts, is, a, is I'm sorry, let me, re, let me rephrase that. One horsepower is 746 watts or 0.746 kilowatts. If I multiply the 0.746 times the 594 horsepower, I see that I'm using, developing 443.12 kilowatts. Obviously, if I run that for an hour, that'd be 443.12 kilowatt hours. Well, if I multiply by the fact that one hour, I moved 4,827,360 pounds, I can divide that into the kilowatts to come up with 0 0.00009170 kilowatt hours per pound of water. Very small amount, it seems. But let's, let's see what it takes for 10,000 pounds. I take that kilowatt hour uh, per pound of 0 0.00009170, multiplied by the 10,000 pounds, and I come up with 0 0.917 kilowatt hours being used. Well, 97.917 kilowatt hours times 12 cents per kilowatt hour is about 11 cents. Not bad. 11 cents of electricity to move 10,000 pounds of water. By the way, if you're interested, 10,000 pounds of water is about 1,200 gallons of water. So obviously, your charges uh, for electricity is not a lot right there. Okay, some final thoughts. I hope you did well on that exam. We'll continue with these series. We want to thank uh, the Lake County Department of Utilities for letting us use their data from the Aquarius plant. We'll continue with one or two more videos from the Aquarius plant, then we're going to move on to their other water treatment plant, the Bacon Road Water Plant. Uh, this video, as you know, was part of the applied or practical math series that we're putting together for operators, helping water treatment plant operators not only apply this math to their plants, but also prepare for exams. Um, you'll see uh, scrolling up a couple of links, by the way, of some icons that come up. You can click on those and get more videos in this series or subscribe to this channel to get notices of when more videos are coming out. I hope this has been helpful to you. Thank you, check back for future videos. Good day.